All right. Because I think my video, my 15 minute video where I showed you how to make my the background non-destructive layer might have not saved. I'm going to show that again to you. And the difference is there is a, a, a way to do a non-destructive overlay layer for the entire background. And there is a way to do it for just the creature. You're required to have one of them. So how do you do it for the background? I'll turn this one off that I created. Underneath your creature, you create a new blank layer. And then you say, edit fill with gray, middle gray, and 100%. That means everything from your creature and behind your creature is going to get covered with gray. Then you're going to set that in a blending mode on your layer options to overlay. And it makes no difference whatsoever until you start using dodge and burn on it. So what's the most important thing for my art, for this example, to burn into the setting underneath the creature, it's going to be the shadow. So I'm going to burn it in. Right there. Now you see that didn't affect my creature at all but it did affect the ground underneath. And if I feel like I overdid it, I can always take the opacity down until I find that the right kind of cast shadow underneath. Maybe I burn a little bit in front of the creature as well. And it won't affect the foreground because those are on top of this overlay layer. But I might also want to burn the midtones in this tree, which I feel is a little too bright. I could do that. I can burn a little bit of the mountains behind. All of that helps. Now, I, I also used it to dodge the background on this trunk. And I always use these tools in the same way, whether it's on the creature or on the background. I use it at an exposure of less than 20 because it's really easy to overdo it. They're very strong tools. And with a large brush, that's 0% hardness. And I like to use it with a tablet with pressure sensitivity. So I can go fine and I can go specific. Now it will only take you so far. So if I turn that overlay layer to normal mode, it's only at 42% right now. If I take it to 100%, you'll see where I'm burning and where I'm dodging. But because it's doing it to middle gray, it's not going to be able to affect the brightest highlights. Ah, I keep zooming in on the tools instead of on my assignment. There we go. So you can see I have some bright sky behind my creature, if I want to burn that darker, I'm not going to be able to do that through the overlay mode just because it's at the extremes of middle gray. So then I actually need to find where that light source is coming from in my references. That's a good question. It's coming from this layer. And then I can actually just burn that layer directly. But instead of burning it in the midtones, now I'm going to burn the highlights down. And it's going to take those really bright spots around my tree or whatever is on this layer and darken them. And then if I want to do it on other layers, like this one, I can burn the highlights on that as well and help it fit a little bit better in this environment. So that is how you do a non-destructive overlay layer for the setting, because I think that video got lost. That was video three in my lecture. So I'm going to burn that down a little bit. Burn this mountain down a little bit. Burn it all. So what's next? 
I've got my creature. The angle of the anatomy matches. The lighting direction matches with my overlay layer. Now is the, the secret sauce for compositing and kind of special effects. It's doing what's called a texture overlay. Am I missing a layer? Let's see. like I'm missing something there. I'm just noticing it now. Huh. No, that's all part of a photo. Interesting. So I'm going to dodge that a little bit right on that source. Just because that shadow looks so deep, it looks like a hole. So let's brighten that up a bit, just a little. Okay, now, now that we've played with that, and actually I'm going to also transform it and stretch it just a little bit. There we go. The tree still on top of it. I think I like that better. Okay. So what is the secret sauce? The secret sauce is now we've got everything set and everything lit and everyone in full makeup and all the props there and we've trimmed it. Now we add the smoke machine. Now we add the effects. So I'm going to save my work. I'm going to go to my topmost layer. And we're going to add what is called a texture fill. I go to our favorite resource site, Pixabay. Not going to log in, so you don't need to. I'm going to just type in cloud. You can use this for any kind of organic smoke machine, right? There's one at the very top. It's been there for a long time because it's very, very popular. All it is is a grayscale cloud. Download that. I'm going to download the second to largest because I don't want to have to log in. Goes to my downloads. I'm going to drag and drop that. I don't even need to save it. I'm just going to drag and drop it directly into my project. I can move it to the very top layer. I now have a lot of layers. I realize that. It comes in as a smart object. I'm going to hit Option Command T and I'm going to stretch it until it fills the space. Like a thick fog that's come in. Then I'm going to use the crop tool just to crop it. And I should actually rasterize it first so it actually gets rid of that information. Now, the easiest way to use a texture fill is to fill up your whole thing with texture and then just take your opacity down. And it's like the fog is lifting. And now I can see stuff again. Okay, but here's the real brilliance of this, of the smoke machine on the stage, is you don't just have a smoke machine billowing smoke. You usually have fans that are putting it in a certain direction. Sometimes, and I used to work in stage tech a long time ago, um, sometimes you would actually use little hand fans and direct it silently around the things you wanted. So if you're doing like a musical and your star has a big ballad that they're singing, you would push it from the sides of the stage, the smoke machine, so little tendrils of smoke would curl around their dress. Does that make sense? Same thing here. We can push this smoke around simply with our eraser. We're going to use our eraser at a low opacity, just like we've been using, super big, super soft. The only time we use it at 100% opacity is when we are getting rid of the hard edges. So I'm going to use it at the maximum size, 1,000 pixels, at 0% hardness at opacity of about 45%. And I don't want that smoke 
to be in the foreground so much. I'm going to blow it away from there and away from my creature. But I'm going to let it gather, especially in the background and at the base of those mountains. And then I might go to a lower opacity and start pushing it. Letting it dissipate in the sky. Now, unlike theater, so you can see this is what it looks like without it, this is what it looks like with it, it's pretty dramatic. Unlike the theater, we can actually change the color of our smoke. So we can use it to kind of emphasize the things we want, de-emphasize the things we don't, and we can put it with an image adjustment under hue saturation, and we can click colorize, take that saturation way down, because otherwise it looks crazy, right? And we can change the hue. So we can make this kind of yellowish smoke if we want, greenish smoke, whatever we think helps to glaze our image together <coughs> and blend everything a little bit more believably. I think this kind of magenta smoke helps quite a bit. So if I see this at 100%, it now looks like this. It's like Halloween special effects, right? But if I take it down, 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 it starts to glaze everything with a similar tone, just like you would glaze an oil painting. And it starts to have everyone existing with the same atmosphere. Make some sense? And the further back, the more atmosphere you see layered on top of it. All right, so that's about everything I can do to make my creature believably sit in this space. And so now I'm going to do one last thing, which is helpful. I am going to hold down Option, now that I'm at the very top layer, Hold down shift and select every layer and then hold down option and say layer merge layers. And because I'm holding down option while I do that, and it might take a while because it's a big file in photo P. Come on. It's going to combine all the layers into one merged layer at the top. <laughs> Unless it can't do it. So what's another way I can do it? Oh, it actually did do it. It just staggered on me. So this is one merged layer. On that merged layer, I can go to image, and instead of going to adjustments, I can go right to what's called auto tone. So now that everything is in one layer, and I'm trying to make it all match, if I click auto tone, it will maximize the histogram across everything. And you can see that mine sharpened it a lot, gave it a lot more contrast. But what I like is to do that and then to play with opacity and decide how much of that auto tone I want. Because often I add too much glazing, too much softness, and auto tone will go back and sharpen my histogram. And so then I decide, okay, that looks about right. And I, it gets the best of all worlds. Now I can save it, and I'm going to save it, of course, as my proving ground PSD just by saving hitting function F11 to make sure I know where it's saving to the desktop. It's right there. Then I'm going to go to file and we have to save it in two different ways for canvas for the proving ground. And I'm going to say export as a JPEG because it's filling a rectangle. I don't want any transparency. Save. It's going to go to my downloads folder. Okay. It's right there. I'm not going to move it out of there yet. Now I'm going to take my two gray overlay layers, my one for my creature. I'm going to switch it from overlay to normal. 